Good evening. And it's my pleasure to be here and thanks for this video because it looks like introduction to my talk. Where is my presentation? <laughs> I need it. Well, anyway, uh, I really need my presentation, but I can start without it. Uh, my message for this TED talk is very simple. Science art is the very important element of our day's innovation culture. Uh, culture of technological uh, things happening in our everyday life. And I'd like you to get interested in uh, science art, uh, to understand where science art, and maybe to think about get involved in science art. Um, okay. First of all, uh, my understanding of adventure. Why technology and adventure in science art? I think that in the hands of artists, technology can become a real adventure in terms of um, challenging novelty that makes sense of adventure. Of course, in terms of fun and lessons learned and sense made. So, these are three elements, I think, more or less enough to talk about adventure. Plus, of course, adventure is a story. So we need a story to be told. And I'd like to start with early science art and one of the, I think, most important people uh, from 20s and 30s, Russian uh, scholar, scientist, and also artist in one person. His name is Lev Terman, who invented uh, the Terman box. Instrument, uh, you can play it uh, with your hands, or maybe dancing, because it uh, synthesizes sound through electromagnetic induction. Uh, he discovered this effect in the lab, uh, designing some, some equipment that uh, getting closer hands to the uh, equipment induces sound. And this is how he invented absolutely new musical instrument. Uh, you can still find people who play it. And, uh, it was fun. He was a very popular performer in Europe and the United States. He spent some years in the US and New York. And uh, he was also inventor of many, uh, I would say, practically useful stuff like uh, light detectors for uh, security systems and automatic doors. This is another example. It is from the 50s and this is another person, British cybernetician and um, artist, very well known, who designed several uh, very interesting pieces of technological art, of science art, and one of them is Music Color. Uh, music Color is a companion for a music performer, uh, which was accompanying um, performance with light. And it was smart enough to push musician to change and improvise music he was playing. So basically, uh, according to Pask, system music color became bored when <coughs> when performance uh, was very um, repetitive, was the same. So system was. Uh, pushing musician to play something different. And this is what Pass called interactive process. So it was real process of making something new, novelty, fun, because uh, some musician reported that he couldn't stop playing uh, during five, six, seven hours. It was so interesting. And there was a sense attached, because that's a new way to play music. Charlie Shuri, I don't know if you heard about him, but he, he was a painter. 
And uh, actually, if you go to SIGGRAPH, uh, the famous uh, uh, event in the uh, entertainment industry, uh, some years ago, ago, they have recognized Charles Shure as the founder of uh, CGI, Computer Generated Imagery, uh, specifically, in, specifically in animation. But he was an artist, and he became interested in computers uh, and created one of the first computer-based animation known. It was in the 60s. And uh, he was a keen collaborating with scholars. He would come to a mathematician and say, you know, I'd like to do something like that, like a ribbon making 3D shapes. But I need mathematical algorithm to make it really a picture. Okay, it was a challenge for mathematicians, and suddenly new algorithmic um, things appear out of their artistic interest. So this is how artistic uh, challenge creates scientific uh, discovery, I would say, and also makes this new collaborative space for artists and scholars. Here's another funny example, and this is a robotic art. Famous Luxus on the name Jim Pike. Uh, his robotic system called Robot K465 and originally was designed as a companion for musical performance uh, but it also used as a, as a kind of street art uh, performance because his famous appearance in public was in New York when Robert was uh, walking down the street uh, uh, declamating an inaugurational speech of JFK, and <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, shitting your beans. So it was kind of a uh, Fluxus style performance, and uh, the end of his robot was in 1982 as the first ever auto catastrophe with robot. <laughs> like the, the end of the thing. And you see, there is a fun, there is a novelty, but there is also a sense attached. He wants to show the, some ridiculous part of technological development, but he is critical. He is, I would say, skeptical, and this is very important for uh, artists to criticize technology, not only employ it. This is another example, very positive one, Nicholas Schoffer and his robotic sculpture. Actually, uh, it was a huge sort of uh, thing happening in the 50s when he brought this sculpture to uh, Sarah Bernard performance uh, into her theater with Maurice Bijard uh, and his choreographic experiment. So you see ballet dancer and this dancing sculpture. Uh, it was designed <coughs> with the help of Philips engineers and uh, sculpture was able to dance reacting to sound and light. So it was moving around, and it is improvisational modern dance, basically with artificial sculpture. This is another robotic example, very well known. <coughs> Ken Rinaldo, called Augmented Fish Reality. There is a Siamese fish sitting in the fish tank, connected to a robotic trail, and because fish can see out of the fish tank, it can uh, move robotic trail down to <coughs> wherever, it, wherever it wants. So, and you, you can see on the screen the kind of view from the fish eyes. So you, you, you can see yourself from this <coughs> fish tank. This is how it is designed. Today, science art pretty often is called hybrid art because it, it involves hybridity of different um, elements. Say, this very well known, very interesting project by Turban Bolland uh, called <coughs> Jean Dior. And it's made 
out of living creature, uh, the bird. But we know that birds, uh, like pigeons, they are they, sometimes they are called uh, uh, flying rats because they produce a lot of how to say bad things on the street. So what he did, he went to the uh, scientific uh, synthetic biology lab, and they designed a bacteria uh, that makes inside the bird that makes soap out of the bird's food. So basically, bird defecates with soap on the street. <laughs> Exciting. If you go to his website, you can find whatever uh, scientific and technological details you want, uh, including uh, bio bricks he used for these bacteria. Um, this is another great thing, the uh, collaboration between Symbiotica uh, Tissue Culture in our group in Australia and Steve Porter, who is a physiologist from Virginia State. So what they did, they did robotic artists. This is the uh, hand drawing, as you see, a black square. Uh, there is the artificially grown um, this is basically a rat's artificial neurons of the rat. So they live in the incubator and connected through <coughs> nano electrode to the robotic hand. So uh, neurons get stimulated by a video camera in the room and get a signal, say, picture of you, or for example, my language is black square. And after that, hands start drawing something. It was excellent an experiment. And because after that, Steve Porter's lab uh, taught these semi-legal artists to uh, to control fly simulator, a video game. So it's a basically. Uh, sort of biocontrol system designed out of designed out of artistic project. Well this is a piece of the I would call it design more than art, but these guys are really smart and inventive. Uh, <coughs> James Auger and his partner designed this um, project called Afterlife. So of course we never know what's happening after life. Uh, but we decided it's going to be useful if our body keeps working after life. So they put um, electric generator to the coffin. What it does, it transforms biomass reaction with specific uh, bacteria to electricity. And you can being still deep on the ground, you can still produce electricity and charge batteries. So we designed a set of batteries, so you can come to the cemetery, pick up charged batteries, and use devices like that. Please guess what it is. I, I mean, it, 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 it can be a shaver, it can be a nightlight, it can be a thing like that, but whatever. And this is another brilliant piece. It's more design and art. Uh, they use flypaper that catches flies, and it is connected to the same kind of electricity generator. So this is this is a clock system. It basically uses a biomass of insects to produce electricity to show you time, what time is it? <laughs> and this is the last, last piece I'd like to show you. And uh, this is a guy from Symbiotic Lab, Guy Ben Ari. And I'd like to say thank 
thanks to a friend of mine, Dmitry Bulatov, who curates a show in Maribor, Capital of Culture, uh, 2012 in Europe. And this piece is exclusively designed for this show. It's called Soft Control, Art, Science and Technological Unconscious. So what Guy ben Ari did? He is from Israel. And you know, for Jewish culture, it's important to to have male people with circumcision. So he took what what has left after that, a piece of skin, and got in the lab, and used reverse engineering to transform cells of the skin into stem cells. So after that. They reprogrammed the whole thing and made neurons out of the stem cells. So what we finally have, we have penis transformed into brain. Excellent. So if you want to see how it looks like, he designed um, Incubator for for the brain. Brain, I mean, it is real biological tissue. It does exist. It works somehow. So uh, it's going to be exclusively shown in November in Maribor, Slovenia. I'm going to go there. So this is the last piece, and uh, you can see some credits here. And uh, I hope. I hope I made you interested in science art. I hope you will be uh, uh, looking online for more details. And I also think that some of you will be thinking about to get involved in science art. So if so, please, here in Tomsk you can find me. If you get crazy enough, we can design some something like that. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention.